Welcome back to the Freedom Equation. This is Brandon, and today I want to share something that I've actually personally been dealing with um, in regards to my real estate. So, you know, and whether you're way ahead of me or you're just trying to get your first property, um, I, have, I have three. Um, I have a house, two fourplexes, um, and, and I'll just kind of quickly explain how I got those. Um, so the house I bought with conventional financing, 3.5% down. It was about $13,000 to get into the house. Uh, $400,000 purchase price uh, here in Portland, Oregon, about 2019. Um, Middle-ish end of COVID, uh, December of 21, um, I used all the money I saved from living in that property rent-free because I rented out all the rooms. Uh, I put 10% down on the fourplex using an FHA. Um, so I did 10% down, FHA, I uh, had to move into the fourplex as an owner-occupant, and uh, that was about $70,000. Um, and then here recently, about six months ago, um, right now it's um, what are we, February. Um, so about six months ago uh, in 2023, um, I bought my second fourplex using a home equity line of credit from fourplex number one. So fourplex number one... The purchase price was 680, I believe it was around 680, <clears throat> so 680,000 for a four-unit building, um, about 20 minutes away from Portland, and I improved the property. I, you know, renovated units, raised rents, all that good stuff, and then because my interest rate was so low, three percent, never see those again. Uh, because I didn't have an option to do a cash out refinance because that would have changed my interest rate and I do not want that uh, because my interest rate is so n really amazing. Same with my house, 2.6%. Um, I had no other way to access the equity than through a home equity line of credit. I found a lender and if you guys are interested, you can hit me up uh, in uh, the comments and I'll tell you who it is. But I found a lender who would give me 100% LTV, and that's loan to value. So essentially, they're giving me access to 100% all of the equity that I per, that I believed that I had in this property. So I bought it for 680. I put seventy thousand dollars down. So that means I owe about six ten. You know, uh, probably by the time I applied for the HELOC, I paid, you know, five grand off. So I owe about 605. And then I paid for an appraiser to come out and appraise the property's value after I believe I renovated two of the properties, uh, two of the units, excuse me, two of the units. I've renovated half the building, uh, new floors, new uh, paint, uh, stainless steel appliances, you know, fixing anything I can fix, working on curb appeal, uh, you know, imp increasing the rents, all that stuff. Uh, the appraiser came out and it appraised the value at $830,000. And that is a little more than $200,000 spread. So 100% loan to value means they gave me $200,000 as a line of credit on an owner-occupied four-unit building. If anyone... If anyone, I dare you, if anybody can find anything anywhere as good as that, let me know. Personally, reach out to me. Uh, my email's on the thing because I want to hear it because everyone I talk to, investors, developers, lenders, real estate agents, nobody could believe that I found this good of terms on a home equity line of credit. Um, and this was as interest rates were going up. So this wasn't like when interest rates were seven percent like they are now. This is this is when they were in like the fours and the fives. But interest rates were going up, and I found uh, that sweet of a deal. Anyways, here is my current dilemma and the reason why I'm making this video. I used a hundred and fifty-three thousand dollars of that HELOC to go buy fourplex number two. So to make that happen. What I needed to do was transfer that money for the down payment. Now, herein lies my problem. I now owe 
$153,000 on this line of credit. And of course, what I also did, because I just spent a bunch of money, um, not even my money, the bank's money, I took out a bunch of credit cards. And when I say a bunch, like three. I took out three or four credit cards um, at 0% interest for 12 to 18 months, and I funded the renovation and rehab of one of the units off of that. So one of the units came to me empty, and I put as much money on these different cards as I could. Home Depot trips, contractors, whatever I could on the credit card. So I didn't have to put any more money into that property. So one of the units was vacant. I fully remodeled it, did, uh, you know, uh, fix the kitchen cabinets, did a bunch of repairs, uh, painted the crap out of everything, um, new floors, new carpet, uh, a bunch of different things, um, landscaping in the back and the front, um, different hardware, I had to buy some new doors cause a bunch of them had holes in it sucks. Um, blinds. Yeah, actually, I had to do all new blinds in that place. Ugh, geez. But anyways, so that cost me a bunch of money um, to do that. And then as soon as I finished with that renovation, I had a tenant in my first fourplex leave. So I was kind of forced to renovate that property as well. So again, credit cards, 0% uh, interest for 12 to 18 months. So now I owe about $15,000 on credit cards. Right now, 0% interest, so totally fine, making the minimum payments, uh, about 15000 About a week ago, I just had to spend $5,000 on a furnace at my house. So as you guys can see here, um, you know, A, my net worth is like over $500,000. That's amazing. I'm 31 years old. I have three rental properties. Two of them are fourplexes. Really cool. But I owe, and, and the 153, I threw a bunch of money at it. You know, obviously I had cash, right? I, I, I did have money. So I ended up throwing about $30,000 at that HELOC. That dropped it down to like 120, which is about what I owe right now. Um, 120,000 on that, $15,000 on credit cards, $5,000 on a brand new furnace. And the house is also going to require a new roof. And I knew this when I bought the property in 2019, I knew that that was an expense that was going to happen. And I, I, I knew it and I planned for it, but I'm in a lot of debt right now. Um, and I'm not really a big fan of that. Yes. I have the mortgages. Yeah. I, I, like a hundred one, you know, $1.6 million I owe to the banks. I'm not really, I don't really care about that right? Because the tenants are paying that off for me, which is fine. The things that the tenants aren't necessarily paying off is my $120,000 HELOC, my credit cards, the new furnace, the new roof, right? Plus I need to eat. Um, and, and of course, you know, I have my own jobs. I work, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do this YouTube thing, see if I can provide some value and educate people and, and show like what it is to really be a new ish real estate investor. Um, I, I, I don't know, you know, some of you guys may, may be thinking, oh my gosh, Brandon, you have two fourplexes in a house, you know, you're not a new real estate investor. Um, I mean, I kind of feel that way, you know, I, I'm, I'm still figuring it out. Um, I, you know, did find some good off-market deals. They appraised higher than what I purchased them for. I negotiated some good seller finance, uh, seller credits and, and things like that to help with the financing. But um, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm actually, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm worried, but I, I I guess I am. I'm a little concerned because I do have cash flow from all of my properties. My house kicks off about 1100. Fourplex number 1 kicks off about 1800. And uh this fourplex number 2, um if I wasn't living in one of the units would be kicking off about 2000. But because I'm living one of the units and I have the HELOC payment of $1,250, that's pulling down my cash flow significantly, putting me at around $3,000 a month. So I have my uh, my income from my jobs. I have you know a, a part time job at this point, a part time job, and a side business, um, plus the three grand ish from my my rentals. 
basically at this point I'm having like heart palpitations, like, oh my gosh, I owe like $150,000, uh, pretty much $160,000 once I have to do that roof, which is going to be happening in the next couple months. <sighs> and I don't really have a good strategy to pay this stuff off other than take all of my money and throw it at these debts. Um, the only thing I've been able to think of is to buy another property and fix and flip it. Um, so I'm working on that. I, I've been talking to a couple other investors who uh, have done some some fix and flips and because um, I need fast money. I, I actually do. I need twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars to kind of help make me feel more comfortable with this debt situation. I still have cash. You know, I, I'm fine. I'm not gonna lose anything. Um I'm not forced to sell anything, which is, which is a really, I'm very, you know, you know, blessed and grateful, whatever you want to call it. You know, I'm not in a, in a terrible situation. Um, but, um, I don't necessarily like owing $160,000 in bad debt, which is anything above five or 6% interest, right? So credit cards, my HELOC is at 9.5%, uh, credit cards when those, in, when that interest kicks in, it's gonna be like 22 or whatever. So best believe I'm going to take again from the HELOC to pay off all my credit cards. So, you know, yes, I won't end up paying 22% interest for the credit cards, but I'm going to increase the amount of money on my 9.5% HELOC. And um, the roof situation, I don't know if I can find outside financing for that below 9.5%. Um, we'll see when I get to that point. But, uh, but yeah, this is, uh, this stuff is kind of expensive. Um, I, I've talked to a couple people and, um, you know, from my actual jobs, like not including the rental income or anything like that from my actual jobs, like earned income, I've never made more than 70 ish thousand dollars in a year. Um, and I can see why it's not as great having 1.6 million dollars in debt when you only make seventy thousand dollars a year and i was just doing the math and, and i promise i'll wrap this up quick i just this is like real talk you guys like this is serious stuff like you're gonna find yourself when you're getting into real estate you're gonna leverage yourself you're gonna use credit cards you're gonna use lines of credit you're gonna you know have to figure it out you're gonna have to use the money you earn and instead of going uh to the mall and instead of buying cool stuff and having a new car um, you're going to be paying your real estate debts. Um, so this kind of sucks a little bit to be completely honest. Um, but, uh, the, the main thing that I want to get at is if I scrimp and save for the next three years, I did the math after taxes at a 22% tax bracket, and I think I'd be lower than that because I have a CPA and I have these rentals are right off, you know, stuff. But at a 22% tax rate, my actual income to me that I'm going to be able to keep is about, I think it was like 60,000, maybe 55. And then I need like 20,000 to live, right? Because I'm frugal and I can live off of $20,000 because I have a free place to live thank you rental that leaves me with about 40 ish thousand dollars a year to throw at my debt so 4 8 12 that doesn't even pay it all off right honestly it's 3 to 4 years of living like a hermit same income hopefully i don't lose a job or anything not being able to do anything no new car no new any i can't buy any more properties just to pay off roof, furnace, HELOC, credit cards. I haven't figured out the solution yet. If anybody has a good idea, let me know. Peace.